variables that you can control or at least acknowledge that you can have some type of formulation to your strategy. And what are you behind in doing to begin with? Now, I know from an IT perspective, there always seems to be a project list. And that project list might be two things deep. It might be 2,000 things deep. But your priorities are going to shift. Lastly, your capacity. Not just what do you have in resources, but what do you have in capacity? Are you, do you have enough capacity to grow from a technology perspective? Do you have enough capacity to grow from a talent perspective? Do you have enough capacity to pay for this? And then let's tie it into the strategic plan. With the fundamentals of our vision, our mission, what are we here to do? Are we here just to keep the lights on? Are we here to launch new products, take costs out of the system with efficiency? Understand your reason for being, or the, understand your reason to even have IT in the first place. Understand what it's capable of doing and understanding where your risk lies. And we're gonna to touch on this in a second. Lastly, measure it. And those pieces, including your warts of your risk, need to be a part of your strategic plan. And I'm not talking about typing on Word for four straight weekends and putting it on the shelf after you present it. I'm talking about making it a fundamental part of your business without going to the, the document heft. I liken this to a technology roadmap. It's less than a strategic plan, but the value of a strategic plan, the value of the effort that's put into it, is not necessarily understood by your colleagues or your peers. So why do it? But you at least need to have a technology roadmap. If for no other reason than for you to understand what you're doing with technology in the first place. And I think there's a couple of components here. One is understanding the business. If your technology group doesn't understand your business and understand it intimately, the ability to add value to that is, is going to be unfortunately retarded. And you want to make that extremely pointed. Secondly is pick some timelines, but not just for you. Pick some timelines for your strategic roadmap and agree with your peers. From an IT professional perspective is agree with the rest of your team. Yep, this is where we're going. Yep, we can do this. Nope, we can't do this. For IT management, it's understanding and agreeing with the rest of your peers that this is even capable and wanted. Because without the buy-in from the rest of the business, marketing, operations, finance, you're a sitting duck. Make sure the stakeholders have not just been apprised, but make sure that they own this and that they're standing behind you. ROI, not just because I work for an accounting firm, ROI is very important for getting your projects through. We're going to invest in this because it is going to have a return of this. And if it doesn't, I stake my job on it. If you're not willing to say that, you don't have the trust in yourself or the rest of your, t your peers. So put a specific number on that return, whether it's taking costs out or adding value in. But you clearly, from a technology perspective, should have a handle on, I'm going to launch SharePoint, for example, because it's going to make us this much more efficient in all these other areas. And each one of those areas has a cost. Measure it. Watch how quickly you get the attention of others. Building the governance. And for those that aren't comfortable with what governance is, I'm going to cover that in a little bit. But governance is an, it's, it, an incredibly important part of any organization. You have to be accountable. But it's not just a review. It's a fundamental checkpoint in, am I adding value? 
and it's a great opportunity to communicate what that value is. And throughout this whole thing, communication can never be highlighted enough. The value of what most of us do is lost in the weeds very quickly when we don't communicate effectively. I'm not talking about an email progress report. Communicate wide and loud. Show that value, not just of what's working, but what's not. But the communications of your technology roadmap, of the progress that you're bringing to the table, really is an important part of getting that buy-in. There's a couple of focus areas that need to go into this, and that's an inventory of your technology, but also of your people. We're going to walk through this all the way up through governance in the next couple of slides and then open it up for everybody else here. So the Wall Street Journal and, and McKinsey said, you know, getting our arms around data and having access to data is one of two of the most important things. And, and I firmly believe, you know, there's data, but then there's just data overload. How many people produce reports that nobody reads? It's very common because you're not even checking the value of what is that data. If it's as simple as understanding one number, that return number for that project, you've hit a home run. I caution you, don't dive into the weeds on this. But come up with these succinct numbers. Where do you get those succinct numbers from? Your peers and your stakeholders, they know. They're probably compensated on the same number. They'll share it. So IT governance is different from organization to organization. And in public companies, they have a formal governance process, um, not so much elsewhere. But governance should be an incredibly par important part of every project that you, that you do and every endeavor that you begin. This is where you're getting the thumbs up or the thumbs down is in the governance model. Most people don't spend time on governance. They spend time avoiding governance, but it goes way beyond, hey, I'm accountable to you. Give me a grade from one to 10. It's your sounding board, and that sounding board is your buy-in. It gives visibility into every investment that you ask for, and it absolutely allows you, it demands of you that you put in the metrics to get people to understand what you're doing. But most importantly, that's where you're going to get your feedback. I need feedback on IT. I need feedback on these projects. And for those of you who are CFOs, the reluctant IT managers, set your governance up because this is where you're going to drive communications. This is where you're going to give feedback. And if you're really smart about it, this is where you're going to request feedback. Feedback is a gift. Not only can you gain the approval and gain the support, but I said earlier that communications was so very important. How many here, oh, I may be setting you up here for a bus. How many people here believe that their supervisors or those above them don't understand what they do? <laughs> I can answer that. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. Um, it's normal, right? Uh, it's, that's that IT stuff. This is where you teach them. This is absolutely where you teach. It's in the governance process. This is what I've done. And if they raise an eyebrow and say, oh, you did what? Perfect. You got an opportunity to teach. It's not a deflection. It's an opportunity to bring a partner to the table and let them feel and understand what you're feeling and listen to their feedback. You know. If I were you, I'd do it this way. That's a euphemism. But listen to that. It's great feedback. The sun kills all bacteria. Transparency is wonderful. And if those above feel that they have transparency on your operations, it's going to make your op operations absolutely efficient. Gain as much transparency as you can, unless you have something to hide. 
There's another joke here, but I won't go there. Transparency builds trust. And from an IT perspective, trust is so hard to build and maintain. It's one hacker away. This is uh, a little bit about hard reality. And, and uh, for those that, that know me well, they, I'm, I'm writing a book on pragmatic strategy. And, and this is something that I try to reach in both the IT people's head and, and a little bit from the C-suite. Um, from anybody here who's been in technology a while, you'll recognize the, the chart on the left is kind of this ISO model that we grew up with years ago trying to understand the layers of technology and come up with names for. But the reality of most organizations, and I don't care if you've got one person who's responsible in your office for IT, or you've got a shop of 3,000, you have different skills in the areas on the left. For every company in here, and for every organization, you have all the things on the left. And some of those things on the left run better than others. But if you're a single person shop, IT shop, you can't effectively manage all of those things. I'm trying to be real. You can't be the master of Salesforce.com or the master of making sure the mice are plugged in. Right? You just, you're, the deeper you go into any one of those areas, the less you know about others. It's just the reality. But you, as being responsible, either, either from an IT management perspective, a CIO perspective, or the CFO perspective, needs to be real about this slide. Johnny's a great guy, the one-person IT shop. Johnny's a really great guy. Well, Johnny probably is, but if you're not training and developing Johnny for those things that are important to your business, don't blame him. If Johnny needs help, do you have an understanding of what your needs are and an understanding of where your talent lies? Many times, that's your mismatch. And it's an opportunity for you to talk with Johnny or the 3,000 Johnnies in your department and say, where do we need to beef up our resources? What is strategically important to our organization because we have a technology roadmap? And what do we need to buttress? How can we train people? How can we develop people? And even beyond this, as we move to the right, do you have the management and leadership talent that is required to lead that organization, that understands that organization, that adds strategic value to the parts on the, rest, on the right? Because the role of IT management, IT manager, IT director, CIO, or the reluctant CFO, is to understand the bit on the left. So I challenge you, do you have a good handle on the bits on the left? 